Hello Python programmers, this is AK. In this video, I'm going to explain about the important algorithm in deep learning that is called artificial neural network. Compared to other neural deep learning networks, the ANN is pretty simple one and it is easy to explain. And if you are planning to start learning deep learning networks, I suggest you to start with artificial neural networks. And if you want to learn more about the deep learning networks, then check out my CNN video. In that video, I explain the mathematics and statistics behind each and every layer of CNN. It will be very useful if you understand the ANN part first. So after watching this video, go and check the CNN video. It will be very useful if you continue like this. Before starting the code, I want to explain the general architecture of ANN. It is very important to understand the structure of ANN before we writing the code. If you already have the knowledge of ANN structure, then you can skip this video. The timestamps are available in the description. Okay, so let's start this video. The artificial neural network contains three layers. The first one is input layer and last one is output layer. And in between the input and output layer, there will be two hidden layers. So you can ask one question. What happens if I add extra layers? I have also the same doubt while making this script. The information about the layers are you can add multiple number of hidden layers, but you can add only one input and one output layer. You cannot add more number of input and output layers. So it is a general structure of ANN. Next, I will explain about what are the things running behind each and every layer. The first layer of structure is input layer. As the name suggests, it only receives the different format inputs from the, from the programmer. It is a basic duty of input layer that presents in every deep learning neural network. Okay, and the second layer are hidden layers. The name itself says like it's a hidden layer. It will find the hidden features and patterns behind every input. The final one is output layer. It will collect the transformations of input data that operated in the hidden layer and it present the data results to the user. So this is the general workflow of artificial neural network. If you understand this, you are ready to learn the math behind each and every layer. So let's start my most interesting part in this video. The reason behind the interest is the math behind the layers are very simple. Everyone who watching this video, everyone who watching this video must learn this maths in your high schools. The teacher who explained these equations to me are a little bored at that time, but the effectiveness of those equations are reflected here when I am learning the data science. So that's the beauty of time. The working style of ANN is divided into two sections. The first section is the forward propagation and second one is the backward propagation. First, I will explain about the forward propagation approach and if you learn this, you can automatically learn backward propagation. That is the beauty of the ANN structure. So let's understand some mathematics. Consider this image is our neural network. We have two input layers. We can name it as I1 and I2. After the input layer, the I1 and I2 are sent over to the hidden layer. In the hidden layer, the major transformation will happen. After collecting the inputs, the hidden layer distributes some weights and biases towards the input data. In this hidden layer, two processes will happen. The first one is the summation and second one is the activation. Summation means our inputs and their distributed weights are multiplied together, multiplied and added together with the biases. So you may ask one question, how we are adding the weights? First of all, the weights are random numbers that are randomly distributed by the neural network itself. With above information, we can form one equation like this. So after our inputs get transformed by the neurons, it will start the next process that is activation. There are some popular activation functions are there like uh, sigmoid, tanh and relu. Our problem is binary value oriented problem. That's why we are using sigmoid here. The sigmoid activation is not a rocket science to understand. It is a simple equation that define your value in the range of zero to one. If you want to know detailed understandings of sigmoid, then you can go through my logistic regression video you can understand even more about the sigmoid curve, okay? So every neuron in the ANN performs these two operations that we mentioned before that are summation and activation. This is the entire process about the ANN. Before I start this explanation, I mentioned that there are two workflows are there in ANN that are forward propagation and backward propagation. The backward propagation is entirely inverse process of the forward propagation. So how it works means, Suppose if we face more loss at the end of processing the equations, it is considered as an error. If the error threshold is more, then this workflow travel back to its initial stage of network 
and it will update the weights and biases over there and it again continues the forward propagation workflow so if it finds less error in the end it stops the process this is the entire stuff about the backward propagation so this is the mathematical and theoretical explanation about the ann let's start the coding process in the first part of the coding i imported some libraries that are considered as the primary requirement for this project and if you don't understand the use case of this libraries then go and check my previous machine learning videos you will get the explanation about the specific library use cases that i'm importing here okay in the next cell i wrote the code for reading my data set in this video we are going to work on heart failure prediction data set so look carefully this is our data set it has 12 features and one target data our, our target feature is death event that is present in this data set in the death event column there are two unique values are there one and zero zero means person is not dead and one means person is dead so these are the meanings that these two numbers are representing here okay so next i am going to normalize my values why i am normalizing means look at the data set it contains the values that are in the different number ranges so it is always a good practice to standardize the values in the data set here i already have a code for data standardization why i love python means the python has huge number of library support with that support you can do any complex process with easy steps so in the top of the cell i imported a library called standard scalar it is used to scale my values in between some minimum number ranges so without these libraries it is very hard to write some raw code to scaling these numbers but using this library it is easy for us to convert into convert the data into scalable format after the normalization part our data is now arranged in a particular range i always suggest you guys to perform some scaling transformations like this it will make your process more easy after the data transformation our next step is to split the data set into two parts one for training and other one for testing here i used the train test split library to split my data set into two parts and out of 100% 25% i allocated for testing phase and remaining 75% for training phase that's all about our pre processing steps i know the pre processing steps are quite simple here because this is just a sample data and luckily we don't have any strings or categorical values in this otherwise we have to write few more lines of code to change them into numerical ones so anyway we finished our pre processing steps next step is to build the structure of our an and deep learning model i already wrote the code here so look at this so look at this first step i declared one variable called early stopping actually before making this script i don't know about the early stopping the early stopping is a cool process in deep learning that will save huge number of training time i will explain about the early stopping it is very simple so when you included that early stopping concept in your deep learning model it will analyze your validation data set and your epoches and if your deep learning model not improving after some epoches it will automatically stop the remaining training epoches so this is the main purpose of early stopping and i added some supported parameters over in the early stopping method so if you want to know about that you can check out the kidas documentation about these parameters workflow okay next i added four layers into my ann structure the first and last one are output and input layers and in the middle part i added two layers that are hidden layers let me explain this structure from the input layer i already said we have 12 features for this project so you need to mention those features count in the input dimension parameter suppose if you have more number of features then you need to mention respective feature counts over here okay and i included the activation function as relu the relu activation here works like a filtering method generally the use case of relu activation is we have the neurons in the deep learning model the relu activation will set some criteria for every neurons if the neurons became positive then it will it will allow those neurons to process on next layers okay so this is the main function of relu activation absolutely there are some statistics behind that uh, behind this relu activation comment it down if you want to learn those things i will make a separate video about it okay so after that there are two hidden layers are there that will make that actual transformations by collecting the data from the input neurons and finally the output layer in the output layer i included the activation function as a sigmoid curve it's a main activation function that will tells us the person is dead or not based on those 12 features okay 
after that i started my compilation process here the important thing you have to focus on that is the binary cross entropy why we are using the binary cross entropy means look at our problem our pro our output only give the binary formation answers so if your data set is like this you should give the loss parameter as binary cross entropy and in case if your data set has multiple classification things then you should put the categorical cross entropy so this is a simple explanation about the loss parameter so let's move to the next step and next step i just fitted my model our deep learning model started its training now it will take only few seconds to finish its training because we are using colab and another thing is the data set it is an easy pc data set it will take only few seconds to complete its training our model performance is good here it gives us 80% accuracy let's test this model so let's print the confusion matrix to check our model evaluation here our confusion matrix it simply tells us 0.68 times it predicted the test value was 0 and remaining 0.16 times it predicted as 1 and rest of the values are incorrectly predicted values you can consider those values as a lack of model accuracy so that's all about this video and if you like my presentation give a thumbs up and share this content to your friends so they can learn about the artificial neural network okay so thanks for watching and thank you see you on next week peace